uh, this is the third part of blood pressure instrumentation uh, it's about the non-invasive blood pressure instrumentation uh, non-invasive blood pressure measurement can be made uh, using an external pressure or without an external pressure uh, in uh, this part we will focus about the one which is using an external uh, pressure and to be more specific uh, the type is a sphagmomanometer and we will talk about uh, more specifically uh, ascultatory method and oscillometric method so we'll start with the uh, ascultatory method which is a manual method to uh, is a method manually to measure uh, the uh, non-invasive blood pressure so we need uh, a sphagnomanometer which is uh, a small bulb a rubber bulb with a pressure gauge also we need uh, a cuff all together uh, uh, made what we call the sphagnum manometer also we need a stethoscope to here we start by uh, inflating the cuff using the sphagnum manometer uh, in order to squeeze uh, the blood vessels in the arm to prevent the flow of, of blood then we start to uh, deflate uh, the cuff using uh, the uh, sphagnum manometer okay uh, the first sound we hear using the stethoscope and we look at the gauge will be the systolic reading uh, then after uh, we uh, the last sound we hear will be the diastolic uh, we should uh, notice that the systolic will be read at this beat whereas the diastolic will be read it at a completely different beat so we don't uh, read the systolic and diastolic in the same uh, beat or however we uh, uh, we read the systolic in one beat and the diastolic in another beat so using the ascultatory method we will have only two parameters uh, of the arterial blood pressure the systolic and diastolic in order uh, to calculate uh, to have the mean we can use the equations the approximate equation of the mean uh, in order to calculate its value so it's a very simple and easy method uh, to read the uh, arterial blood pressure systolic diastolic and mean non-invasively uh, most common source of error in this method is deflating the cuff too quickly uh, usually the american heart association recommends the deflation of the cuff at the rate of two millimeter mercury per second okay also another uh, possible uh, cause of uh, an error is a selection of uh, a wrong size of the blood pressure cuff uh, to measure the blood pressure non-invasively uh, first of all you should make the measurement of the patient arm circumference okay then based on it we can select which type is appropriate uh, which uh, uh, non-invasive blood pressure cuff size appropriate to use to read the uh, pressure okay a cuff that is too small produces a high errors whereas a cuff that is too large also will, produ uh, will produce low errors so it's better to have the uh, so the, the right side of the cuff prior to start to read the uh, pressure uh, now we will move to the second part of the non-invasive blood pressure instrumentation which is about the reading uh, using an oscillometric method uh, an automatic which means a device so the first one was manual this one will be a device uh, instead of uh, hearing we will use a pressure sensor and instead of using uh, a manual uh, a sphagnomanometer, manual one, uh, we will use valve and pumps and uh, another safety features to perform this. Uh, the classification, so it's a medical device. The classification 
of the blood uh, non-invasive blood pressure cuff is according to IEC, which is the International Electrotechnical Commission, is an applied part BF, which means body floating. This is an example of uh, a vital sign monitor manufactured by GE Healthcare. It's called Dynamap V100. As we said before, as a vital sign, we have uh, three parameters. Okay, we have the non-invasive blood pressure readings, which include di diastolic, systolic, and uh, MAP. Also, we have the pulse oximeter readings, which include the value for uh, the pulse, uh, the SpO2, as well as the pulse rate. Uh, finally, we have the temperature reading. Okay, so this the the, the above device. This is the circuit for the above device. Uh, GE is uh, using a special type of uh, blood pressure cuffs, where this type is called double hose because yeah, they use two, uh, two hoses in order, uh, one for the inflation and deflation of the cuff, and the other one is used to uh, uh, reading of the pressure inside the cuff. So this uh, this uh, system is called double hose. It's uh, uh, used by GE. So uh, one hose is used for, uh, as we said, for the inflation and deflation. And the second one is used for the reading of the sensors, uh, the reading of the pressure inside the cuff in order to, uh, to have the reading uh, of the pressure, systolic and uh, as well as the mean arterial pressure. Uh, the first difference between the oscillometric method and the ascol, uh, uh, ascultatory method, in the ascultatory method, we measure, as we said before, the systolic pressure, the first sound, and the diastolic pressure, which will be the last sound. Whereas in the oscillometric method, we will measure uh, Two pressure will, which will be the systolic pressure will be the first reading, and uh, the uh, and the mean arterial pressure, the map, which will be at uh, the oscillation when we have uh, maximum oscillation. Okay, so now we will start uh, to introduce each part. So the first hose, as we said, is used for the inflation and deflation. Also, we have a protection here. Here is an overpressure switch. An overpressure switch means uh, we have a pressure sensor. In case of an overpressure, this wall, uh, this uh, the reading of this sensor will activate the dump valve. For example, if we have a problem in the pressure sensor, the inflation system will continue to inflate the cuff uh, to a pressure because it assumes that. There's no signal. As we said before, we should inflate the cuff until we prevent the flow of blood, of blood in the blood vessel. In case of a failure of this pressure sensor and to avoid the harm for the patient arm, the pressure, the overpressure system uh, switch <coughs> will act and activate the dump valve, which will uh, which, uh, which will deflate. This the blood of uh, cuff uh, quickly. Whereas in the normal case, the inflation system, which is as we said before in the part one, it's a rolling pump, will inflate this blood pressure cuff, and the deflate valve after the uh, reading of the pressure sensor of uh, no blood flow. The, this sensor, uh, this valve will start to deflate at a specific rate. As we said before, it will be around two millimeter mercury per second. The first, then we will have the reading from the cuff will be measured through a pressure sensor. This pressure sensor uh, is a the Whitson bridge with uh, four strain gauges. The signal of the pressure sensor will be passed through a low pass filter and a band pass filter. And we will have two signals, one called the cuff pressure, 
the prag, uh, the pressure inside the cuff, and the second is the oscillation which we are used in order to measure the systolic pressure and to uh, measure the mean arterial pressure. Uh, we will, uh, because we have only one ADC signal, we use a multiplexer, uh, two and one multiplexer, in order to uh, digitalize these analog signals. Okay, this is the design. So it's a simple design for uh, a non-invasive blood pressure machine, which is the V1 above. Uh, as we said, we use a double hose system, one for the inflation and deflation, and one for the reading uh, of the pressure using a pressure sensor. The pressure sensor will read the pressure inside the bladder of the cuff, and will then will pass through two circuit. The first circuit will be a low pass filter. The second will be a band pass filter in order to have the small oscillation which are superimposed in the, uh, the, the uh, cuff pressure. Okay, uh, this is the inflation system as we said is rolling pump. This is a deflation valve which is used in the normal def deflation at a rate of 2 milliliter. Uh, two millimeter uh, mercury per second. This dumb valve will only be activated in case of the failure of this sensor and the activation of over pressure sensor. So in this case, to avoid the harm for the patient hand, this will be activated using uh, using the over pressure switch. Of course, we will have a display and a keyboard. So. As we said, we he here we have the pressure cuff sensor using we uh, the, uh, the pressure sensor will read the pressure inside this cuff, and we will have two circuit. This one a low pass uh, filter, and this one a band pass filter. This one is the reading of the low pass filter, and this one is the reading of a high pass filter. As you can see, this is the small. Oscillation, which is uh, which is superimposed on the uh, high value of the pressure inside the cuff. In order to isolate this small oscillation, we use a non-invasive blood pressure. Then we make a comparison with the first sound. We see like the range for this oscillation and the range of the pressure inside the cuff. So it's uh, like for example, here the peak will be around the 100. Uh, uh, 60 millimeter mercury, where the oscillation is very small range. We are talking uh, about uh, about uh, three millimeter mercury, or even uh, three to four millimeter mercury. Uh, the oscillation represent the beats. So uh, from the peak of this oscillation to the peak of this oscillation is a beat. Also, this another beat, another beat, and so on. So by uh, measuring the peak to peak, we are measuring the heart rate. And uh, when we make a comparison of the pressure inside the cuff with the oscillation, which we have it using a band pass filter, the first oscillation will be the reading of the systolic pressure in the pressure game. And the maximum oscillation will be here, the map. So we use this chart in order to read the systolic pressure and diastolic pressure uh, and uh, sorry the mean arterial pressure uh, in the uh, cuff in the uh, uh, pressure inside the cuff okay well, then we have the systolic and the mean then we can calculate the diastolic as we can so three parameters we can calculate here uh, we can measure here sorry uh, the first one is the systolic pressure, the second one is the mean arterial pressure, and the third one is the heart rate. The heart rate can be calculated, as we said, from peak to peak. So this is the first beat, this is the second, this is the third, the fourth, the fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this is the twelfth beat where we have the maximum oscillation, and we read the MIP. Uh, the map, which is uh, the mean arterial pressure, and the first oscillation we read the systolic pressure. This is another uh, block diagram uh, for uh, uh, non-invasive blood pressure uh, inside a vital sign. 
However, instead of using a double hole system uh, as the one used in uh, Dynamap, they use a single uh, hole system, which means we use the same holes for the uh, inflation uh, and deflation. And it is the same holes for the reading uh, by, uh, by uh, the pressure sensor, which is, uh, as we said before, uh, a western bridge made up of four strain gauges. So the same holes. So what separate bend between these them is the selenoid valve. As we can say, the same this hose is shared with the pressure sensor with the over pressure uh, switch, which is used in case of the failure of the pressure sensor, as we explained before, and also it's shared with the pump. Okay, so the same circuit, the pressure sensor then pass through an amplifier to amplify the signal here. And we will talk about this later in more detail. Uh, we have also the signal, as said before, we pass the through, uh, to, uh, through a band bus filter in order to have uh, the oscillation, the small oscillation, which uh, three to four millimeter mercury and the Pressure sensor which will uh, pass uh, will be uh, in a range of 160 millimercury. Okay, uh, will be all passed as before. We use uh, a multiplexer with analog to digital converter and then entered into the microcontroller. We have the memory, we have the display and printer, network interface, user input, and watchdog, uh, uh, watchdog timer. Okay. I hope that this will be uh, simple and easy for you. So, as we said before, the pressure sensor is not is just is a Whitson bridge made up of four strain gauges. A pressure sensor typically employ piezo resistive, which is uh, as we said a strain gauge which convert the pressure into an electrical uh, signal okay the output of this uh, will be, be uh, the output will be a differential signal as I uh, said before the output of this which bridge will be a differential uh, signal uh, should have a full scale of 20 millivolt this means the maximum value will we have uh, is 200 millivolt uh, with a 5 kilo uh, ohms this is a uh, this is a plug diagram for a Dynamap, another uh, vital sign made by GE. But here is more detailed. As we see in this block diagram or electronic circuit, we have the uh, pressure sensor, we have the power supply or excite we say it's the excitation for it. The we have the amplification. But before we said we have an amplification, but we didn't say what type of amplification. This one, uh, what, what type of amplifier is used? This one is used, it's called an instrumentation amplifier. Uh, the reason we use an instrumentation amplifier, I need to save uh, the small oscillation. Uh, although the output of the pressure transducer or the Whitson bridge is a differential amplifier, well, however, in this signal, as we see in the previous here, as we see, we have a large DC signal, if we consider DC, this one, with very small oscillation. If we use a normal differential amplifier, this will lead to the loss of this oscillation. We cannot have it anymore. In order to have amplify both of them and to uh, save this oscillation, we use the instrumentation amplifier. Okay, then we use a second uh, differential amplifier as the previous, uh, as the one used in the uh, invasive blood pressure. So we have a special, uh, uh, in the invasive blood pressure, we have two instrumentation amplifier, two uh, differential amplifier, if you remember. However, in this diagram, Due to the uh, uh, due to the, to the nature of the signal, we where we have a very small oscillation and a high offset or DC signal, we obliged to use a special type of a differential amplifier 
to avoid the loss of this small oscillation, which is the instrumentation amplifier. However, the second uh, amplifier will be the same, which is a uh, uh, differential amplifier, where we uh, make the zeroing of the pressure sensor similar to the previous, uh, to the one used in the invasive blood pressure. Then, as we said, we use a low, pra, uh, low pass filter. So, all the after here, only we will have the uh, pressure uh, sensor with a small oscillation altogether, which we call the cuff pressure. Uh, then we use a band pass filter here. You can see the band pass filter in order to have this small oscillometer. Then we use a multiplexer, which is uh, two to one, in order uh, to only to use one ADC signal. Okay, this is the electronic part. This is the sensor with its circuit. So we have a pressure sensor, we have an instrumentation amplifier, which is a special type of a differential amplifier. It's used in, in case we have a very small AC signal, uh, which is uh, uh, coupled with a large DC offset signal. In order to avoid the loss of this small signal, we use this instrumentation amplifier. We then we have a second uh, differential amplifier where this is used for zeroing of the pressure prior to make the reading uh, then we pass to low pass filter then we have the cuff sensor uh, the same signal is passed through the band pass, fil uh, band pass filter in order to have this small isolation so the TP1 and TP2 are these signals okay this the one after the low pass filter and this one after the band the pass filter. Reminding again, this is a small signal. It's in the range of three to four millimeter mercury, where he, uh, here is 160, mil, uh, 160 mil, uh, millimeter mercury. For example, the SP will be, which is, as I said, three to four millimeter, Resting usually the normal systolic pressure will be 120 millimeter mercury. So imagine three millimeter mercury with 120, which will be very small. For this, we use the band pass filter in order to uh, isolate this small oscillation, and the, uh, then we make the comparison between them to measure the systolic pressure and to measure which will be the first oscillation and then we'll measure the map which is the main arterial pressure which will be at the maximum oscillation and also we use this oscillations uh, to measure the heartbeats which will be each uh, peak to peak will be a be, uh, will be a heartbeat so this the first heartbeat second heartbeat certain and so on and this will be the last heartbeat so using the oscillometric method we will have three readings using the pressure sensor okay this will be the sensor part this uh, with the bridge which we have talked about this is the second part with the actuators so uh, as a device we have sensors and actuators the actuators are the uh, the valves as we said with, uh, before we have two valves and we have what we call a uh, rolling pump to inflate the cuff and the valve to deflate at a rate two millimeter uh, mercury and also we have the over pressure switches which will be activated in case of the failure of this pressure sensor okay in case this pressure sensor uh, is failed we have a failure in this sensor uh, to avoid the damage to the patient arm this over pressure will activate the valve to prevent this damage to this patient and will stop the pump from inflation so it's similar all all of these are similar okay uh, so we have a pressure sensor we have an instrumentation uh, instrumentation amplifier and we said before why we need an instrumentation which is a special type of differential amplifier uh, we have also then a second uh, differential amplifier uh, the, to make zeroing then we pass through a low pass filter we have the cuff pressure reading 
uh, also the, the same signal will pass through a pan bus uh, pan bus filter uh, in order uh, to have uh, the, to isolate the small uh, oscillations and to make comparison between uh, the cuff uh, pressure and the small oscillation to calculate systolic pressure to co calculate the mean arterial pressure the systolic will be the first oscillation will be at uh, the first oscillation and the mean arterial pressure will be at the maximum oscillation okay and uh, the heart rate will be uh, heartbeats will be calculated peak to peak of uh, between each uh, two consecutive uh, oscillations uh, then these two signals will be passed through a multiplexer okay two to one then will pass through an ad sig uh, signal which will be then sent to the microcontroller the second part as we said uh, it is made of the pump and the valve. The pump is used to inflate the cuff until to prevent the flow in the blood vessel, uh, which will be measured uh, by the pressure sensor. Then we will start to deflate the valves uh, at a slow rate, which will be two millimeter uh, millimeter per mercury millimeter mercury and uh, we, uh, we record the readings at the pressure transducer uh, in case of the failure of the sensor there is a safety circuit which is uh, an over pressure switch in case of a detection on over pressure this will uh, stop the pump from inflation and also will uh, deflate uh, using the deflation valves deflate the blood pressure cuff to uh, prevent the damage or harm to the patient arm okay uh, another point here in the circuit we see uh, that we have a static ram uh, we also see a watchdog and we see a counter here uh, we see the crystal which is a 12 megahertz so very slow this one it's a 12 megahertz uh, uh, clock uh, we see a small also ee prom uh, also we see a uart a uart uh, which is used for serial communication uh, the uart is an acronym for universal uh, universal uh, uh, as asynchronous receiving and transmission so it's an acronym uh, for a, spec uh, a specific type of uh, serial data uh, communication uh, it's asynchronous serial data communication uh, called the universal uh, asynchronous uh, receiving and transmission i hope this uh, block diagram become easier for you to understand it's very easy, easy we see we have the underlying pressure here we have the fluctuation here we have a pressure sensor which is a strain gauge, uh, which is a bridge made of four strain gauges. We have an instrumentation amplifier. We have a second uh, differential amplifier for zeroing. Uh, it passes through low pass filter to have the cuff pressure. In order to have the oscillometric uh, signals or, or oscillations, we need uh, a band pass, uh, band pass filter. Then we have two signal pass through a multiplexer two to one. Enter an ADC directly to a microcontroller, which has uh, which is uh, has a speed of 12 megahertz. Uh, with a very small EPROM and watchdog and with an, uh, a serial communication which is a universal uh, asynchronous receiving uh, and transmission uh, which is asynchronous uh, type of serial communication we have the support for the actuation with the safety over pressure switch which is used in case of the failure of the pressure sensor this is a rolling pump and these are the valves uh, I want to uh, to mention one point. Uh, this is uh, is uh, is the high end uh, blood pressure monitoring uh, device because uh, we have two type of uh, valves, one for the adult and one for unit. Also, the over we have two over pressure switch, one for unit and one for the adult, uh, which means this uh, machine is a high end uh, one. This again, the pressure, this is the oscillations, very small scale or range as you see. 
uh, also I forgot to mention that in this board we have what we call testing points this is the testing point one this is the testing point two so if we put an oscilloscope we will have we will see this in the oscilloscope and analog signals okay uh, we have another testing point here which is the ground so in order to measure the oscillation you need to put uh, the uh, the the probe of the oscilloscope one at the tip two and one at the ground in order to measure the cuff the blood pressure cuff you put uh, the uh, oscilloscope uh, probe uh, one here at tp2 uh, tp1 sorry and one at tp4 uh, what else we have in this diagram i think this will be enough uh, for this uh, for this one This is the explanation uh, for the, the above the diagram uh, about the pressure sensor, about how it's work and so on. Uh, this is about the uh, filters amplifier, the instrumentation amplifier and the differential amplifier, uh, which is used, uh, the, uh, the, uh, which come after the instrumentation amplifier for zeroing. And uh, this uh, about multiplexer and ADC. So we have two signal and one ADC in order uh, to transfer this analog signal uh, into the digital form readable by the microcontroller we use uh, ADC uh, with a multiplexer 2 to 1 so this is the actuator parts and already we explained it this is an algorithm for a non-invasive blood monitor how it's work uh, how each part work start uh, the pump uh, deflation the valve and so on Uh, this uh, was, uh, as we said before, the GE has uh, a double hose system, whereas some uh, manufacturer using a single hose uh, system. This is a double hose and this is a uh, single hose system. Uh, thank you again for uh, your attention and see you. In